What's up everybody? This is Ian Kadanak, aka the Renegade Writer from ConsciousWritersTribe.com, here today to bring you week number six into my deep dive into Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way. So this week's title or chapter is titled Recovering a Sense of Abundance. And abundance is a has been a buzzword for the last 20 years in the new age community and it's even moved into the financial community like corporate life like we want to feel abundant and abundance is weird because a lot of us think money but there is a huge list of things that you can feel abundant or scarce in that are just as important as money things such as your friends your relationship with your job your relationship with working out your relationship with where you live your social life your health your diet your art, your spirituality, relationship with nature, we can go on down the list, right? And having a scarce relationship with money is just one area. But as artists who are trying to live, it is one area that is important because a lot of us have lack in that area. If you're an artist, you probably have a lot. People want to be your friend unless you're like a recluse. People want to, you know, you, you already know, you've read enough books to understand spirituality. Like you have a lot of the, you've read books to know about your health and how to exercise. Shout out Yoga for Authors. Go check out that website, everybody. Yogaforauthors.com, launching soon. But when we have these, abundance is a lot larger, but Julia Cameron in this section focuses on money and our relationship with money. And she ties God to that. And that God, we have this, even if we view God as like a good entity or energy or person, if you believe in a bullshit religion, you th we think that God doesn't want us to have money, that the energy source, for whatever reason, doesn't want us, doesn't want us to have money. Maybe we haven't had money for the last decade and we haven't been able to open ourselves up to the channel and flow of money. But I'm here today to tell you that it's all about your co-creative relationship with the higher entity, with whatever we want to define it as. And Julia talks about a lot of this, but it's time to heal that relationship. We've talked about this for the last two weeks. If you have not, if you are part of religion, you are in a traumatized, oppressed cult. Yes, not Charles Manson or Jonestown type cult, but a very uniform, very constraining cult on your mind, on your body, and on your soul. And the way to recover that is to learn to not live in extremes anymore. Because sometimes we want to force our whole life. We want to force everything. We don't want to tap into the ether. We don't want to tap into co-creative energy. We want to force the whole picture. And when we do that, we are like stamping on, you know, that on our co-creative relationship with a higher energy. And if you are 100% objective, let's say you are an atheist, you're into scientism, you're an engineer type person, what I would say to you is that connecting with your best self. We can call this connecting with your best self. If we don't want to say, you know, God or any of that, your highest potential as a human being, if you're forcing it too much, then you're forcing through objectivity what you think that highest self wants but you don't know that because you would already be that you'd already be maximizing your potential and i'm here to tell you that it's half heart half mind and a lot of us want to do it with all of our mind but there are some people and actually a lot of them are artists a lot of people who force too much are not artists a lot of the artists flow too much they let this energy take them away too much and what happens with that is that you might have beautiful art, you might be able to tap into the flow and be wooey, but you suddenly are taking in the situations with your, not just your art, but in your life that are perplexing to you, that cause issue. I know a lot of emotional, empathetic, and artistic people who are way more talented than I am, but they're in just garbage relationships. They're stuck in bullshit religions because they are too soft. They didn't use their mind too much. That, that They didn't use their mind enough to go and force a situation, force an outcome. And once once again, it's about taking the middle path, especially with spirituality. If we're talking about politics, like, oh, well, I'm a centrist, then that's a different story. But when we're talking about religion, going up the middle in a non-hierarchical way seems to be the right solution so we don't have to kill billions of people like has happened. Maybe you know, we haven't killed, 
Well, we religion has probably killed billions of people, if not hundreds of millions. In the 20th century alone, 250 people died from democide, which is innocent people being killed by governments. So that is a terrible statistic, everybody. I mean, I just a side note, I, I just, I'm going to keep asking this on the channel. How many, if there were no government starting in 1900, how many people do you think would have been killed by, wait, zero, but how many people do you think would have been killed by random civilians? Do you think the small militias and the small factions around that, you know, if got too big, we would, you know, the larger mass of people would smash, would have killed 250 million people? If we would have focused on that, and that's the same with this century and the next century, it's going to be a lot higher. It's a lot easier to figure out how to live in autonomy than it is to figure out figure out how to live with masters. So anyway, that's a side note. But the artists right here, we want to be open. We want freedom. We want autonomy. And one of the limiting beliefs I hear is like, whoa, there's too much. Plato said it. The, those who seek too much freedom are the ones who become most enslaved. And that's true. But I'm not talking about freedom from the man or freedom from these things. We're talking about a, the liberation of consciousness across the globe. Every single person having not having the knowledge to not hurt others, to not steal from others and try to be charitable. That can happen. And that's one of the most fractured relationships with God. God is trying to tell us that. That higher energy wants us not to hurt people, not to do bad things. It wants us to be charitable. But doesn't want us to start organizing into hierarchies and living in master-slave relationships? Obviously not. So, time to get out if you're caught up in a religion. And if you want to comment about that, if you want to talk to me about that, I got you. So, the other thing that Julia Cameron doesn't talk about with abundance is the societal programming. That There are so many people who will down you if you want to be an artist. It's... It's crazy, even just the snide comments. The whole capitalist structure is built against artists because you're not really producing anything that's essential, right? It, of course, art is the most one, the most probably essential thing around to help shape our hearts and minds. But in terms of what corporations think and the government thinks and the public education system that you know created most of us thinks, art is not important because if it because art is subversive to the whole system in general, it can cut right through it. It has no stake in the game. You know, people who are on pension plans, like if you're working at a corporation right now, if you start going too ham, guess what? They're gonna nick you. You're off, you're off the pension plan, your retirement, your 401k, your benefits, all gone, your status. But if you are an artist full time and you have complete freedom on all of your platforms and you're not, you know, multiple streams of income, suddenly you can start saying shit and you don't have to be censored anymore. And that is just one of the ways there's already an, oppress, an oppressive gateway that you have to walk through as an artist. Have you been told that you're gonna be a starving artist? Why is that even a term, starving artist? What hardworking artist do you know that isn't secure? That's been doing it for a decade or two. Hardcore, eight hours a day. What artists do you know in their field that's not making money and, be, and living okay? None, how many know that can't put food on the table? None, because if they did, if they worked eight hours a day for 20 years, even if they weren't making any money on their art, there'd be people around who'd be helping them. I know a guy who lives up in Utah and he used to host like a radio talk show, radio, internet radio show about like autonomy and freedom. And it was like from the angle of like legalese and he never asked for money. There was no donations, but somehow he's just met a couple people and they've helped him stay afloat with his research and what's going on. And basically, you know, I'm sure he lives in a house with roommates and he's doing his research, but he's going with it. He's probably only been going for seven, eight years, seven or eight years. So that is one of the things that you need to watch out for. There's not just the programming with God. There's a programming in terms of society. And there's also programming in terms of your friends and family because they don't want, it's hard for them, at least some of them, and you can't tell who the snakes in the grass are going to be. It could be the person you expect most or expect least. They do not want you to become an artist because that's all they want. They don't want to go to their goddamn day job where there's some fucking pervert harassing them or there's some asshole boss. They don't want to be there. And when they hear you and see you trying to succeed and you to a level that you don't have to deal with that, they're going to be pissed. 
they are going to be pissed and do everything they can. And sometimes silence or negligence is more is just as negative as if they say something. I'd rather have someone be like, uh, that's not gonna work Ian, then like me tell them like this huge plan and I'm all excited and they're like, oh, oh man, cool, sounds awesome. Like that type of enthusiasm. If I was like, yo, I'm going to medical school, I'm gonna be a, the best hand surgeon in the of all time, blah, blah, blah. They'd be like, oh man, that's so cool, whoa, that's crazy. But if I'm like, I'm gonna be the greatest poet all time, they're gonna be like, what? Poetry. And another thing that Joy Cameron discusses is work can be play. And a lot of the reason that the money, that abundance doesn't flow in a certain area is play. Because all scarcity is, is blindness to an opportunity. And opportunities are all around us. And us taking those into, us learning those is what can help us. Us learning to see those opportunities is the key to all of this. And the way to that is to be playful. If you're always so focused, you can't see what's around you. You can't see. Like, for instance, I am doing, I, I wrote down 100 different ways that I can make money in 2021. And it took me a while, but 100 different streams of income that I could do in in 20, 2021 to show my mind that there is so much potential. Any one of those ideas can make me money and none of them are like a job. They're all very playful. And I would recommend maybe you doing the same thing. But if you're not if you're not aligned, nothing if if you are if you are aligned, excuse me everybody. If you are aligned, nothing needs to feel like work. You can be able you can do whatever you want with ease, even if it's taxes, even if it's the worst part of your job. But if you're working for a corporation that's not helping the world or, or it's iffy if they're helping the world, you're not going to be aligned. You're not gonna be in the flow. You're not gonna to wanna to do that. You're going to be tired. It is going to suck. It's so obvious, but we all keep doing it for the bills, for the money, for the car payment, for the house payment, for the kids, all these things that should have been thought of before. But now that you are an artist and if you have those things, it's time to step up and work hard so that you can still, you know, take care of that business and then and be an artist because your art can change the world. Like no this book is not for pitter this course at least is not for the pitter patterers. The people who are going to be the totality of their life is just drawing some things in their journal or writing some poems they never share. This is for the people who want to push the bar and change the world because you feeling a little bit better about your life and then not helping others you're basically, your life is a waste. You've done nothing. You've left the next generation with nothing better. Nothing substantial better, you know, substantially better. They won't be able to say in whatever chosen niche, like, whoa, Claudia really, Claudia really like was pivotal to like what we're doing right now. You can do that. Even if you're 70 years old, you can make that happen the next 10 or 15 years while you're still alive. And why are you wasting your energy? Instead of you know being able to, to play, where is this energy going? Because it, it's making you not abundant. And we've talked about this time and time again. This is just another lesson. Where is this energy going? And wherever it is going, just understand it. And that's been a lot of this, a lot of this course. Write down, for instance, like this week we're counting money. That's one of the big exercises. Count. Write down where you're spending your money. We've written down what we're doing with our time. We've written down. Um, what we've you know we've done reading deprivation and morning pages and like a couple different exercises like this that make us more aware, and and why would we even why would we waste? Excuse me, you don't have to if you have to if you have obligations right if you have a job that you have to go to or family events there is a way to not use as much energy. You can be just as happy, just as engaged but it's about non-attachment. This is pro tip, everybody. If you're at that family party, if you're in a fight, if you're like doing you know, a, a verbal argument, don't attach, just listen and try not to like use the least amount of energy possible because that's taking away from something else. And if you have to do the job, if you have to do these things, that's fine, become invisible. Become like a ghost. Use magic and spirituality to fly under the radar while you're hustling these other projects. And one of the other key things about 
that Julia talks about in this chapter is luxury. And she really harps on the, the items that you can buy, like buying yourself something nice. And I would recommend doing that if you're in the position to do that. One of the things I recommend for all writers is buying a fountain pen. If you don't have a fountain pen, it's time to invest. It's um, got fountain pens all over the house. It feels better as a writer. It feels you want to write with the best utensils possible. You want to write and feel good and feel flow with what you write. And that only improves your handwriting, but it feels cool to be using ink and like a really dope pen. Something like that can go a long ways. Trust me on that because you want to use it. You want to see what it feels like to write or to type or to paint, whatever brush. And nothing is too much. Once again, if it's for your art, if it's for the betterment of the world, the universe will replace that money eventually. It, it will find a way. And that's why we're counting money is to help save money. And it, she's using this word as luxury instead of abundance. Like she's like an abundance you know, an ab luxury of time and luxury of space. So if you need a, want an abundance of time, you need to start viewing time as not non-existent. You need to learn and honor how you feel instead of what's going on in your mind. Going with how you feel with a time, with a guideline. Like if we look right here, I have some stuff on the wall, right? These are guidelines to what I want to do for the week and for the month. And I'm trying to follow them and they're like guiding me, but nothing is in stone. There's no um, 8 a.m. I'm doing this. And once again, it's in the middle. I negotiated these things. I felt into these things. And now it's up to me that I felt I negotiated and felt like these are the things that need to happen from my intuition. And now it's up to me to basically under pick what I feel like doing the most and then doing it for, you know, three to six hours and trying to get a big chunk done. And the luxury of space, like being able to have a home office, like that's organized. Oh, like here's a writing desk. Here's, you know, printers and I have a standing desk and there's room over there. Like it's having the luxury. It's like, I would, why would I want to live in New York City when I can live in somewhere, someplace like Las Vegas and afford a house like this for the same price as like a studio apartment? Like, what are you thinking? Like what is going through people's minds? I don't know, but space is important. Living in apartments sucks. Like transcending out of that lifestyle is going to be very helpful. And then the abundance of creativity and creating that abundance starts with living an interesting life. It starts with being healthy and well rested. And this week is kind of a weird week. There wasn't too much in here. It was a pretty light week in terms of what we're doing, but this stuff is some of the most important stuff. And I would recommend looking, checking out Steve Pavlina's course. Um, it, that's Pavlina, P-A-V-L-I-N-A. -A, Steve Pavlina, Pavlina's course, Deep Abundance Integration. And I might be able to, let's see. Never mind. I was going to try and show, try to show that website, but Deep Abundance Integration, everybody, if you've made it this far, it's $99. I have no connection to it. It's a great course. Go check it out. See if you like it. I would say it's the best course right now on abundance that you can buy. Anyway, everybody, this is Ian Cabinet checking out of week six of the deep dive into the artist's way. Peace.